In an era of online commerce and declining music sales, a single European market for music copyright seems essential. Artists, consumers, online retailers and the music industry face obstacles due to market fragmentation, lack of clear-cut rules and widespread illegal downloading. But are their views the same about the issues at stake? Moi, moi, je suis de la génération des gens qui ont téléchargé euh, et donc euh, moi, j'ai pas cette notion d'acheter la musique. Donc forcément, c'est difficile de, de changer de fusil d'épaule et de se dire aujourd'hui, ben non, euh, c'est mal de télécharger et vous êtes tous des voleurs. Et c'est sûr que c'est pas bien, voilà, c'est du, du vol, certes. Mais, euh, mais je crois que si, euh, enfin, il ça a double tranchant, quoi. il y a des avantages et des inconvénients. Euh, je parle toujours des, du, du téléchargement illégal. Je crois que ma musique aurait pas euh, aurait pas eu le succès qu'elle a eu et on n'aurait pas entendu euh, sur internet. Enfin, s'il n'y avait pas eu internet. A lot of people don't know if they go, in particular if they go on a site that is charging you, they think automatically that must be a legal site that is compensating the creators. But there's loads of sites that do that that have no licenses with anybody. Au niveau euh, téléchargement illégal, je pense que ce qu'on peut faire, c'est juste euh, c'est juste euh, trouver les vrais, euh, les vrais, euh, les vrais coupables. C'est pas, c'est pas en allant euh, chez le consommateur et en disant c'est toi le voleur. Ou c'est, un moment c'est ceux qui ont fait euh, Internet et je crois que c'est chez eux qu'il faut aller quoi. It's not about creative people versus technology. It's a, uh, it's a mutual respect process where um, technological companies respect the uh, the the input that that the creative community make. They're asking for uh, reasonable remuneration for. Um, the, the, the massive amount of infringement that goes on day and daily uh, using their copyrighted material and with impunity. And the internet service providers need to recognise that and they need to meaningfully engage with uh, creative people and their representatives. One way to combat illegal downloading is to increase the offer of online music legally available to consumers. Today, only 14% of music sales in Europe take place online. Well, the system for ISPs to get licenses can be very complex. There are a number of different rights holders that an ISP has to go to to negotiate a license, and each of those rights holders may have a different idea about the licensing structure, and they, if any one of them says no, or, ha or has an idea about the licensing that's different from the idea of the ISP, then it, it means that the service itself can't launch because any service needs to have all the content to be competitive in the marketplace. Certainly copyright licensing is an excuse. Whether we can make it easier for people to acquire music from a market that those dig digital retailers are in already from other countries of Europe, that might, that might be possible. But whether or not it is valuable to set up 27 different dig uh, digital retail sites in, in perhaps different languages, only the, only the retailers can answer that question. It's not because they can't get a license for the music, it's because perhaps it isn't valuable enough to them in terms of their business. If we look just at Europe, the reality today is that we need some 30 plus licenses to launch across the European Union if we want to represent all of the repertoires, which we do. And as a result, we do see that many service providers are offering services in very few territories, usually in less than five of the 27 European Union territories or member states. So we would like to see solutions where there would be a fewer number of licensing entities offering pan-European repertoires with a certain degree of repertoire aggregation. New EU legislation is necessary, yet solutions should also come from the industry. The Global Repertoire Database is one example of how industry cooperation and new technologies can facilitate cross-border licensing. Uh, a single database showing musical works not only in Europe but throughout the world could be a very important tool to make a licensing process and also the distribution process when it comes to money back to authors a much simpler and much more efficient task. Most music services would have no idea that they have to get rights from the songwriter as well as the artist slash label. We need to make it easy to license or at least know where, where you should go to get a license for copyrighted work. One of the best things about the Global Repertoire data Database is that it is global. It will not only protect uh, the consumer in Europe, 
it will protect the songwriter and composer and author who is European, it will protect their rights in the rest of the, rest of the world by making sure they are registered once and accurately and that everybody knows who to pay. The big difficulty we have is trying to identify one single technology that could be used for the whole of Europe because once more, uh, if any, every society in Europe is investing in its own program, its own technology, in its own country, we are losing money. How to tackle music copyright problems and encourage new business models. The European Commission is currently working on a proposal to modernise music copyright which would enable multi-country and pan-European licensing. It will present new legislation in 2012.